All right. What is going on out there, everybody? Once again, this is your boy, Soul of a Man 504, a.k.a. The Money of Us, coming to you live with another edition of Soulful Conversations, where we bring you the most amazing people from around the planet. So today we have uh, Mr. Kevin Elliott, New Orleans' is own, uh, the Mr. Entrepreneur. Uh, I call him, like myself, he is a modern-day renaissance man. Maybe he will not say it, but I will say it for him. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to let him introduce himself to the world, uh, to you guys out there. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Elliott. Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Kevin Elliott uh, from New Orleans, uh, raised in Kenner. Uh, little, little duality going on over there with that. And... Uh, Went to St. Aug, graduated from DLSL, and that's it. Like, pretty much it, you know. Went to college, USL, Delgado, the typical, you know, Southern New Orleans route. That's about it about me, bro. Wrote, book, wrote, wrote two books, actually, then, you know, a couple of businesses I didn't try, and, and we here now. So, let's, so you, you know, your, your mentality is, you know, you... Uh, you have like you have this this fighter's mentality. I, I I feel like with you, you always have like you always feel like you know what I'm still breathing, so I got a punch a chance. You know, even if I'm in the ring with Mike Tyson, I, if I could connect with just one, if I could just connect with this that That's one it. punch, I could still like I can still move forward. So where uh you know with you, where does that mentality come from? I don't know. I think well I know it comes from. Uh, pretty much being the equivalent of a roach on your back, right? Being in the lowest possible situations and fighting yourself out and um, re rinse repeat of that and keep fighting yourself out and it's never really over. You know what I'm saying? So once you understand that it's going to keep coming because it's like the is of life that, you know, you can even go biblical with it like they say, no weapon against me shall prosper, but weapons, you know, that's, that's, that mean you have to, you going that's not saying you're not going to take a lick or you're not going to go to war. You know what I'm saying? No weapon for me, you can't shall prosper, dig up, but there are weapons mentioned. So that means you got to be ready. So either you going into life with your armor on or, you know, are you naively thinking that, <laughs> there's something mysteriously gonna have your back without you actually physically preparing yourself. True. So that's where it comes from, man. Be, just being a lot of, so many experiences, you know, kind of like culminate who you are. And you still keep going, though. That's the thing. That's the fun. That's the fun part about it. You still keep rolling with it. Yeah, your, um, you know, your, your creative side is, um, you know, like you said, certain things you won't say, but I will give you credit for it. just knowing you for like uh, since uh, 2010. I think I met you like as soon as I came to Houston. I was working at uh, Massage Envy. You know, I was like, you know, this dude is a hustler, man. <laughs> like your, you know, like your creative side. Like you have, uh, like going into the the laws of attraction. You know, you have the ability. Really? Yeah, which I, you know, I certain ways I could do it in Houston, but you know, massage, I don't know, me and these folks, like you said, like, you were like, man, D, you and these people just don't have nothing in common. I was like, bro, nope. <laughs> zero, like zero in common with these folks out here. But, you know, you just have the ability to kind of do it. You know, you do it, but you, you really have a way of like, painting like your own pictures. And, you know, you are like, you are an artist. And we're like, speaking of painting, like, well, that that therapy of like a, a painting and is is that more of a artistic thing? Is it more of something that just kind of calms and soothes your soul in a sense? Honestly, like I don't want to get too um, spookish with it, but I use all these uh, things that I dive into, like my art, you know, my paintings, and I really take it. And if people want to believe it or not applied to life you can learn a lot from art you know you can learn a lot from growing plants you can learn a lot from whatever you dive in say like for art example you have to learn a certain type of patience for art you know what i'm saying it's just like 
growing things like growing a garden. You have to learn a certain type of patience for that. Those are two different elements of patience that you have to understand. And if you apply those characteristics that you picked up in a hobby to your life, you'll understand like the processes that you go through in order to get to the next level, to ascend to the next level. So it's kind of like, for example, I figured like people rep um, recognize God or the, the most high. We are like a painting. So that's why sometimes like certain, you can look at like Torah, the Bible, they always tell you be still because if the most high of God is an artist drawing you, he's painting you and you keep moving, you keep moving. How, how's the painting gonna come out at the end? Sometimes it's like, and the art at the end is your blessing. So sometimes you might think like, dang, why I didn't manifest what I really, really wanted is because once you put that thought out there, you didn't hold the pose long enough to receive it. And that's with like this opposing energy that we face every day. Once you put the thought out there for something that you wanna manifest for yourself, that opposing energy does everything to keep you off the poles of being still waiting. And people gotta realize that it's a spiritual, when you're dealing with metaphysical things, it's a delayed gratification. So what, back to the original question is, I use all these things that I dive in to teach myself about myself and how to apply it to different aspects of life. And if honestly, if you would not put yourself in these situations to create, to take a, a thought from an intangible thing inside of your mind and make it physical, that process teaches you how to even deal with people. So. That's what it, That's why I pick up a lot of these uh, different uh, hobbies, what people will call them, so to speak, for art, drawing, boxing, whatever I want to do, to kind of learn how to mature in it and progress in it. And then you'll realize that, that all those little principles translate to who you are on a daily basis. And it, it helps you grow or it helps you go on a decline if you don't get it. Right. It's like my uh, it's like my sensei used to say, he said, you know, you don't you don't just uh, you don't you're not just hitting something you're hitting through it, like going like towards your principle, um, like you were saying, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, speaking something into existence or when I got into photography, you know, I just I knew it was going to be a money shot based on how the person was dressed or based on their mentality, you know, if it was going into the school, taking picture of the, you know, the kids for the yearbooks and stuff. That kid was dressed to a T. You are like, you could do so much, but you know, if, the, if they just came in, food stains everywhere, there's only so much that you could do. It's almost like you, it, it's, it's like halfway, you know? So it's like, you're yeah. saying, you know, you're not just speaking, but you're speaking with power. You're speaking with, you're speaking with, uh, you know, you're speaking with uh, intent, almost like Bruce Lee, be formless, be shapeless. He said, you know, like, be water, my friend, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. Yeah. All so, war, yeah. All war stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All war, all war, all clashing, all, some, all speaking of an engagement of some sort. And if you're not ready, it's like going on a football field with no equipment. <laughs> you will make it one play. And that's what happened with a lot of people in their life. Like, they just sit back and just let life happen. I don't sit there and wake up and just say, okay, what's going to happen today? No. You know, after I accomplish at least one or two things that I want to accomplish, then I might let, you know, the toss-up of life happen. But my, my specific purpose for the day is going to be met or at least attempted. Or at least definitely I'm going after it. And if, you know, so it's like, I don't have all that. It's like I said, we're not, I'm not privy to this, you know, but it's perseverance. And I start to realize the more you start to just keep going, the more you're going to um, separate yourself from, you know, a lot of things. And you start to realize and people don't get it. It's like, man, it's how things are happening for you and it's not happening for me is because it all goes back to when you get tired of yourself, that's when you know like you're gonna start going and then nobody gonna be able to tell you different. So 
right? It's like finding your, you know, it's, it's almost like finding your purpose or, or your love or, you know, whatever it is you're in a relationship. You're going to be there, or, you know, at least try to be there every day. And like you said, you know, it's like breaking, you know, trying to do something, uh, you know, you, you see why you need to score. So it's like you don't just, you know, play after play. You're just going to keep going until you hit a three or two, a game-winning shot, or you just, you know, you just yeah. first down. And, you know, and, and that's just – that would – that's the thing that separates the – the regular, you know, like the the Jordans, the Kobe's, the MLKs, the uh, you know, uh, like Michael Jordan said, you know, like the like the documentary, like you know, he had the mentality where he stepped on the court, he said, you know, I'm I, I I'm gonna do this no matter what. I'm literally ready to die for winning. And a yeah. lot of people just don't. A lot of people wouldn't take it that. Oh, I don't know, Mike. That. Yes, because <laughs> yeah. it goes back to. Like, we don't really even understand that. Death. You know, if you understood that, then you'll know how to push your body and push your mind to the limit every day to break laws. How you think the man that learned how to make a plane fluid, you know, is a fearlessness that come with that. And if you don't have that element of a fearlessness about you, then guess what? You're going to go to work, you know, go home every day. You know, you pretty much going to have a predictable life which is not bad if that's how you want to play your life safe, you know, but most of the time, it's funny how most of the time people are most successful in their life be the class clowns, the risk takers, you know, there are some sad stories that come along with that, but the ones that could transfer that energy of like breaking of, it's not like actually breaking the law, breaking the rules, but just being pushing things and questioning certain things allow you, it's going to transition to you in your adult life. And you know, you'll be able to channel that that clown to questioning things that right might matter for you and may put you in a position where another person wouldn't even have thought to even do it because they stayed within the, the box, the square. Right. That's what I always try to tell people, you know, think like, you know, just think like there is no box. You know, it's like we are, you know, we are our ancestors' like greatest and wildest dream. So, you know, it's like we can take all of that old school stuff and apply all of this new stuff with it, merge it and make something new and more creative and just, you know, just take it up to levels that nobody has, you know, ever thought before. And like you said, it's, it's, you know, rising to the top, um, you know, rising above and not, not settling, you know, like I like to, I like to tap into the Mamba mentality, you know, or RIP to Kobe, you know, and that's interesting how all of that happened. Cause it was like a lot of, a lot of big companies were just shutting down one after the other, after the other. Then Kobe, uh, then, you know, the, the tragic thing with Kobe happened. Then after that, you know, this, this whole COVID thing happened, you know? So as mm -hmm. you know, to me, it was just, it, it's always interesting how it, then it always inter it all it's always interesting how how it lines up. A lot of people feel like you know, well, I didn't think this was going to happen in in my lifetime. Well, we didn't think we were going to go through Katrina's, Harvey's, the you know all of these other things that happen in you know that happen in the world and you know, all of these you know historic floods and whatever, whatever. But you know, like you said, it's the thing of how you you know how you perceive it and how you. Uh, you know how you survive it, and I, I call you the ultimate survivor because you you have a way of like you know I just feel like any anybody else, uh, even like when I saw that clip of you on the news, that's why I say you're world famous because I saw that clip of you on the news when you were on the bus, you were talking to the uh, you were talking to the news guy, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And you were like just giving like this, even though you were in that situation, you were just giving like this amazing wise advice. I think a, a lot of that because you had uh, almost like yeah. been through the storm in a sense. So can you kind of can you kind of touch on that a, a little yeah. bit? Yeah, you know? I'm gonna go back to what you said about the Kobe, COVID, yeah. all this thing. Uh, I'm gonna just say this, and I'm gonna go to the the Harvard thing. Most of the time, people don't understand that the truth is stranger than fiction. And the more you dive deep and the more you kind of like do your research, you know, you'll find out things that you, sometimes ignorance is bliss in certain situations because that's why it's like, I got to the point on Facebook, I don't even really comment no more because you get to the point where as you realize that some people's minds are not wired 
to understand or even dive into certain specifics of things because they, they just don't want to go there. And you have to realize within yourself, it's like a humbling experience that it's kind of like a mechanic. Everybody can't do a mechanic's job. And that goes back to some type of way he mentally knows how to break down parts and, you know, and put, configure it and you know, mm-hmm. demolition it and put it back together. That's the same with information too. I started realizing that most people brains are not programmed to understand, you know, what's happening right now. You know, we're going digital as a race. That's all I'm going to say, period. Like everything. So going back to the, uh, so I just want to touch on that for first. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah, and so it's like for those people that spend most of their time online trying to convince people of, uh, of your beliefs, sometimes your truths, your perspective on things, you have to realize that it's just like sitting a Lamborghini in front of them and tell somebody, hey, man, here go all the parts, put it together. Well, you might line a thousand people up in a room. One dude may really know how to do it to the teeth. You know, he's, you know, he's plugged into that algorithm of life, so to speak. And like I said, for him, kudos. And for you, for all those out there that's trying to, that, that understand things about life and, you know, the staged aspects, aspect of this situation, you know, be blessed to understand that and also humble yourself because you got to understand that everybody is not and you know, uh, program to understand the same things, and that's the beauty of life. So, back to the Harvey and Katrina and all this other stuff. Yeah, we've been running for a minute, and that's just not me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I like I always like nowadays try to uh, always consider the next man. Like, you know, I don't want to sit up here and be like, "Well, I survived." Did you know I did this, that, and then like I talked. I have friends actually lost pot, lost his friend inside of the storm, you know, cut himself, whatever the situation is. And it's more of horror stories, but I did go through, you know, several situations in life that, you know, put me back to squares negative, you know, even after Harvey, you know, you had a tropical storm, I lost my stuff again. Like, you know, I had to call myself trying to, you know, run from one situation and fell into another. Even that, I didn't post that online. But it was so many things that just like I start to realize it, it make me anybody that was close around me start to know that it's like I take a like almost an insane approach to it. I, you know, it's the last, you know, the last situation you mailed, I lost my vehicle and all my stuff in a storage facility. Like how? How? But you know, I start, you know, I got the call. Mm-hmm. I went outside, the car was underwater. An hour later, got the call from the storage facility, my stuff destroy all my stuff you know so it's like once again it's on and once again it's on like you know what i'm saying it's like did that ever happen because i didn't dwell in it i didn't let you know people gotta understand like sometimes when bad things happen for you happen to you it's just a stripping in like it's a stripping it's a shedding of a skin you gotta just let it happen and it's like, you can't sit up there and be like, oh, Lord, why me? You know, you know you're standing in line behind a million people asking that same question instead of realizing, like, man, this really was a part of the process that I couldn't do it on my own in order to go thrust to the next situation. So sometimes life has to rip you up and you have to put yourself back together along with, you know, this break her comes along the way that's going to help you get to your next higher situation, even, you know, from it may be finances, it may be body, it may just be a strong mind. Blessings don't always come in the form of finances. Sometimes they come in the form of, uh, like, information and just having the experience so you could be a mentor to somebody else. And then, and also you for you to be able to, sometimes you get broken down so you could get out of your own way and to be able to lean out to your own understanding and accept mentorship to help you out. Some people don't know how to receive things. You know, that was my problem. So I kept realizing like, damn, I could get knocked down, knocked down, knocked down, but it gets to the point where you just get so drained where you got, you have, there's help that you, you know, that's going to be thrown to you so many different types of ways and it don't always be finances, but that raft 
that somebody might have uh, gave you just to give you a peace of mind may lead to your a financial situation or it's like it's like puzzles man it, it's fun when you realize this it's fun every day every single day you're like even the bad stuff sometimes you know <laughs> i go a little crazy too <laughs> but it's just like <laughs> i really i go back and think about like the breadcrumbs that's waiting on me as soon as i walk out the door or as soon as i open my eyes yeah. Right. And, and that's, you know, that, that's interesting. That's the amazing part. I think it's like what you've, what you've been through helps to shape and make who you are and like who you're going to be, because it's like, you always, you have this, this encyclopedia of mental events that you've been through that you can kind of go back and be like, well, all right, this situation is like this, 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 and that is happening. But you know, I've kind of been down this road before, you know, just like I uh, yeah. like said, when you, uh, you, you, you know, you lost all your stuff again in storage. It's like when my car went underwater, it's the flood of 2016, I think, or 15, whenever it was out here in Houston, so, you know, my girl was like, hey, you know, look outside the window. And I just looked outside, car was just rocking with the water, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, no. like, so I mean, now I called the dude uh, from the uh, you know from the insurance company. He's like, "Man, wow, you're so calm. Everybody else is freaking out." So I mean, what 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 can what more can I do? Go outside and try to save the car, you know, and and throw my life away. So I mean, yeah. I, I knew I had insurance, and I mean, I knew I like I said, I've been through the Katrina, so I knew the process, you know. It's just the same thing with this, you know. It's not weather; it's more, you know, like I said, it's more like a. It's more like a, it's more like a, a, an event that's happening around the world. So it's a massive, you know, to tell people that it's a massive shift. But like you said, certain people are going to get it. Um, you know, it's only, I, I just, I feel like it's just a certain chosen few that will get it. The rest yeah. of the people, you know, it, they may get it in time, but it's, it's going to take them a while, you know. It's yeah. going to take them a while to get there. And that's just like a lot of things in our life, you know, just even like dieting, you know, we all know what to do. Like, you know, we all know exactly what to do to get ourselves together. It's just like, but when you start to put that motion, those one foot in front of the other, here go that opposing force that I talk about, you know, however you want to identify. Some people say, say whatever, you know, so it's just like, there is, that exists. Like you say to yourself the night before, man, this is it. We're going we gonna to eat this piece, this cake, whatever. And tomorrow, I'm starting to die. How many people, like how many people do this? And then the next day, it come that opposing force with your favorite temptation, setting up the perfect event for you a week ahead of time or two or three weeks down the road. And you haven't prepared for that war that's about to happen within yourself. You know, you lose again. I mean, you know, like that's diet. That's just mm -hmm. food. <laughs> that's just food alone. So we talk in every aspect of your life. Sometimes when you, things you say to people, you know, it's like you have to control yourself. And like sometimes you wanna, <laughs> you wanna tell people certain things, and it it all goes back to like that discipline. Same thing. It all it applies to so many aspects of your life. That's why I say it get fun after a while because once you start to know it's kind of like you have to now you start to balance it out you know like some things you're gonna let slide man some days you're gonna let some days you're gonna give in but you're supposed to so you could appreciate the next time when you don't give in it's a process so like you know for people that's trying to live like lose weight and stuff like come on man i don't care if you fail a hundred thousand times you know the next day just don't fall for the same trap again you know, because it's going to be a trap day two, day three, and it gets worse. Like, and, and the more you start to, like, sharpen and get yourself mentally strong, you're going to start knocking them down. Then it's going to be fun because you're going to see it coming towards you, and then you'll be able to, like, mm, not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> or, or bring it on. You got the right one today. Bring me a hamburger or whatever. <laughs> you feel me? But yeah. you don't have to beat yourself up about it, you know? So it's like getting on a bus with crazy people. They take all your stuff, and you got to get back on that same bus the next day. They be like, oh, you got new stuff. But the next yeah. day, you got a gun, some brass knuckles, stun gun, and a baseball bat with 
with a chain wrapped around it with spikes. And you just sit there like, yeah, I'm ready today. Come on, what you got? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For real. But at least you, you know, but it, once you start going through it, you, just, you can start preparing. Right. Like for the next event, like, you know, I said I was going to drop them Oreos, this little Oreo thing. So I was going to drop the Oreos, but, you know, the next day, it'd be so funny, like, somebody bought me some free ones. Like, somebody dropped some Oreos. Like, how did that even happen? So then I have a choice to make. So that's when it goes back to, like, the metaphysical side of life. How as in, it's a spiritual, it's a, it's a medical, physical, spiritual side that we don't, we can't see it. But they see us and they can play on our physicality. And once you recognize that, you see the game coming your way. So certain things that you want to accomplish, like I said, goes back to holding that pose again. The, something is like a, it's like a, like a fly. It's just, it just, it just, it distract you to get you off your pose. And if, just like I said, if you are letting an artist draw you, you can see the fly coming your way. You gonna blow at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold up one second. Why get rid of it? Or you gonna let it in your get in your way and you just keep your pose no matter what the situation is. Man, I just like I say, man, I learned a lot, bro. From like even like gardening, you start to realize like just gardening, like the ground is a neutral thing. So when you put like seeds in the ground to grow something, if you don't properly take care of it in that neutral space, which is the ground, stuff gonna come up anyway. Then you gotta deal with that. So like as in, what I'm trying to say is, you know, through the gardening, you realize, I realize like, stuff, you gonna put stuff into your situation, your life, and it's gonna reap a harvest no matter what, the good and the bad. And when it comes out, you have to learn how to adjust from all the stuff that you didn't do along the way. Like, you know, you're supposed to put a little fertilizer in it, so it might come up a little deep, little dehydrated. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you have to learn. It's going to reap anyway, the good and the bad. But once you put the seed in, that goes with your kids. You know, once they once that seed is in the ground, you have to deal with what come up anyway. So it's just like, just be prepared for that. And it's like, man, you good. From that point on, it's, you start to realize like, okay, they go to battle every day. And if you ain't prepared, be prepared to be unprepared. And whatever happened with that is like almost consequential. So let me just touch a little bit like when you were, uh, when you were on uh, the island and like the power of manifestation, do you feel like that's one of the most beautiful things that you ever manifested? Just as far as like a one-on-one -on -one experience, like, well, you know, with yourself and something that you really wanted as far as something that you really needed at the time. Yeah, man. It really was like, anybody that know me, like know I've been like, like inching at just island life for a long, long time. It's like, it's not like something that just sparked up and it's like, got a job. No, man, these things are, you know, a sequence of events that took place that led me to go from massage to construction <laughs> just to get there though. And then when, you, when I got there, then I took advantage, full advantage of everything that those experiences had to offer. And, and it came with like, honestly, living on an island, you have to really be lean out to your own understanding you have to go to mentorship so if you bullheaded you ain't getting you, your communication is going to be shut short so that that mean there's opportunities that you won't be able to even be presented to you because you coming in with a full cup just like i said on the bus the cup have to be empty for you to receive anything so if you're going somewhere with a full cup and sometimes inside that cup it's fear, mostly filled with fear. And if you get over that, you go over there with an empty cup and like kind of like Michael Jordan, it's like you're not literally ready to die, but you really take that in consideration to a lot of situations you put yourself in. So I love that in life because it, it taught me so much about myself and how to slow down. And like I came back, well, when the first time I came back, I was so frustrated because I realized that it's just so fast paced over here where it's just give and go. 
It's just like, you know, it's a nonstop rat race. And it's just like, over there, they have time that they go back to the fundamentals of life, playing guard and staying outside, you know, knowing, knowing without knowing, like, you know, knowing a lot and knowing nothing, being able to accept information. is just like, you know, they have their problems over there too, you know, every place mm -hmm. have that opposing energy. And, but it's such a blessing to be able to go and see this and then touch another grid of land and, and observe it and then and take it in and then apply it to your life. And then you'll start to see like, down. if I take and go to certain places and even when you meet people, you know, like know nothing, like basically, and just take that information in and then you'll learn. And then it's kind of like, you can take that neutral ground, plant your seeds, and when it harvests, it'll be beautiful because you know better now. You know what to put into the ground. You know how to fertilize it. So when your life start manifesting, which is a delayed situation, it, it, it come out beautiful. And it come out slowly beautiful where you can really observe it all. So that, yeah, that isolation, that isolation out there really like revealed a lot to me about myself. And so it was just like, I started realizing things like just everything revert back to like going in, you know, even when I came back and went to church, it was like, I went, came back home, and you know how I go, you come back home and you try to go back to, you know, on the praise grace, whatever. And uh, he was preaching about something and I realized that it made me open my Bible again because, you know, you go through these stages in life where, you know, <laughs> you go through your righteous stage, your Egyptian and all this other stuff, but then you start to realize it's kind of like all those books and all these doctrines go back to inside of you, you know, all of them, all of them. Like, and it's so obvious when you start to, but you have to separate yourself sometimes to start to figure these things out. And the only thing hard back, hard, the hard part was when I came back, I didn't fit in no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You try to rekindle yeah. old relationships, you try to reach back and your frequency is different. You're on a different channel and it's like, it's not your fault, you know? It's not the other person's fault, but it, it, it just what it is. Experiences do you that, it's just like, a person that didn't been in jail, you know, go have a conversation with somebody that's been falsely accused and stay in jail for a long time, all been in jail, period. Get out, you know, they've experienced something that causes them to think a little different, even when they talk to having a normal conversation, they're on a different frequency. Your experiences do that for you. And so it's just like, it's like you gotta take the, what we perceive good with bad, with going away, coming back, you know, not being able to relatable and not needing to be able to reach back to the mindset to even draw that energy to try to trap people back into like getting with them again, almost. It's like, unless that person starts to realize things on their own and you'll grow with them. So. Right. And I, it's I feel, sad, man. It's sad, but it's, it's necessary. That's true. I think, that's true. You know, it's, you know, we do, we go through, it's just like through adolescence and the teenager, you know, we go through growth spurts, you know, some things may still be relevant to us. You know, it's a, it's a change in your philosophy. It's just a change in your life. And like you said, it's not, you know, it's, it's not necessarily may not be you or them, but it's just a situation. It's just what, what the time is, you know, you may need to go this way, you know, while they still, you know, thinking this way, still doing the same old, same old, but, you know, your, your philosophies, your mindset, it was like, you know, you know, cool. I, I've seen this beautiful side of life and I want, you know, I want to experience more, more of that. And I need to do X, Y, Z so I can continue to, to go down that path, you know, and it's just, yeah. yeah. And once you know, you can't, it's like, once you know, nobody can take that from you. Like, you know, like I said, I've seen bioluminescent water. Like, I can't tell nobody, you know, I've seen so many different things going in the rainforest, you know, and, and not coming out not a bit. Just simple things that you, people living in harmony with animals. Like, I was looking at somebody post something the other day, and I was reading the comments, and it was like, people were amazed to see, like, 
animals living amongst men. I didn't see it. Like, you know, it's not you could you could live around certain animals as long as you invade certain uh certain portions of the territory, and, and you'll be surprised. You know, I have a friend of a friend that was in St. Croix that showed me his friend uh, trained a, a snake. It's an albino python. Everybody in St. Croix. No, I'm not lying. He on the beach right now, I can't be on Sunday. <laughs> With a trained snake. And I asked the dude, I said, see, bro, is the, he said, the snake is smarter than, than a dog. But you can't explain this to people if you have never, if your brain, first of all, your brain has to be ready to go there. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes it all, it takes you for you to leave, put yourself in another situation with an empty cup to understand because if I would have went with the attitude of like, just negatively speaking, I probably would have never met the dude. It be, your attitude forms your world. So that's why I like, I try to perfect that now, man. I don't really, you know, uh, involve myself with trying to, uh, uh, just basically uh, worry about what people post and let it affect my situation. Whatever I, I see, it, you know, and you know, most part you try not to take some things in. But once you kind of like start to try to sharpen your own knife within yourself, you respect all opinions. You know, political, whatever. You know, I, I laugh at it all because you know it's that's the way that person thinks. And if win, lose, or draw, they could be dead wrong. It's like, I appreciate that opinion because that's the way the world's spent. And you know, it, and that'll stop you from being so frustrated about just life in general. Because I remember back in the day, I used to log on to certain social medias, like some people do. Mm -hmm. Log on, you get frustrated. Why? Why would you let somebody else's opinion affect you? But you have to be put in a situation where you're alone to understand. Like, it was one time, like I said, it was one time I didn't watch the news at all for like a year. I kept all my friends. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what they thought because I wasn't involved in the same. I just called to see how you were doing. Or I, you know, I jump in and see what's going on with you as a person. I know what you people are capable of. If I meet you, you, you could, just like me, you pretty much know like what I'm capable of. But is the reason why we formed the bond, is the reason why we formed the kinship. And I appreciate that, even if it perceived to be negative to someone else. You know what I'm saying? So I once I started learning that, bro, it's like, man, it's such a humbling experience because you start to realize like everything is needed. Everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, it is needed for observation purposes. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to believe in the most high, some people don't. God is everything. It's, a, it's like taking a, a glass and shattering it on the ground and every little piece is it. And that's what God does. I think he uses it, us to observe every aspect of every aspect of a creation possible, of creation possible. And you just got to realize that you realize that it's like, you'll be human sometimes and let people kind of like, sometimes those words people say manifest and fester in your heart. But you know, once you start to appreciate, you know, like I say, some people not programmed to understand everything. And you start to realize, like, okay, that was needed for me to understand what how people think that way. Don't have to mean that it affect me. And sometimes I take some things in because some people make interesting points. And that's when you're supposed to do your own research and dive deep into. Because sometimes some people make some make some outlandish things say some outlandish things but there's a point within it like seriously <laughs> so True. that's you know like i'm having fun with this man and i you know it's sometimes like i say it's like a gift and a curse because you only see so many people that could relate to some of the conversations that you want to have sometimes you don't want to talk about saints and food and you know what i'm saying like you, yeah. you just don't want to talk about just that you know sometimes you want to know are you crazy? Do you want to build with people that have you observed this too? Am I trip? You know, it's like <laughs> right. you know, but yeah. if you in a situation where everybody talk about the same thing, and as soon as you bring up something that has a, a seem a, a like an opposition to what they may believe in, I literally like, shut, shut <laughs> yeah, <I> feel like <laughs> so you have most of your Man. most interesting thinking people in the most 
smart, the geniuses, the most artistic people in, in isolation, inside of a body trapped inside of isolation. Cause they, you know, the, sometimes some people need a little validation to kind of bring out the greatness in them. And they're in a situation where <laughs> there's no, there's no hope. They have the negativity has the building surrounded. And some people don't have the intestinal fortitude to fight through it. You know, right. like, so again, a lot of stuff be suppressed, man. A lot of stuff that we supposed to know is suppressed due to that, that mindset. And I think social media then kind of manifested that, man. It has. Yeah. If people can say what they want behind a keyboard. You can't get at them. You can't. Right, right, you know, right. Say what they want to log off on you. You, you, te- you pecking away. You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So, then 50, I ain't gonna 50, lie. 50 Cent said something like that. He said something about, uh, I forgot the term he, he said, something about like keyboard gangsters or something, something like you said. Yeah. You know? Like somebody said, you, know, you want to see the truth in somebody, give them a, give them a phone, a smartphone, or give them a little laptop and, and let them go away. That, that assured you everything that you pretty much need to know in, in their comments. Yeah, man. And like, I see like a lot of people post stuff. And like I said, I don't, you know, I have no qualms on anything that people post. I don't, I really don't, I don't, I don't, say I don't care in a sarcastic way, but I, I don't. But it's just like, I being all at the number of people that waste their energy. <laughs> just wasting your energy, just talking to the peck, 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 peck. Just wasting your energy with negative posts about people you don't even know. You don't even know if they're real. How about that? Mm-hmm. That's the funny thing. Some people that like, you posting about things that you don't even, people that you'll never see, <laughs> people that you'll never have not one one-on-one conversation about. I think that's wasting your energy. You know what I'm saying? So I don't oppose it because I know that it's needed for persons like me and others like that see this stuff and be like, man, <laughs> They don't get tired, you know, of talking about somebody that gonna never ever respond back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what are you trying to do? What, what is that yielding of fruit? What kind of fruit is that yielding for someone else's life? To know, we all see the same information, fake and all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's just right. like, what does that do for you as a person? It's, it's just being all for me because it's like you grow up with people and you thinking like they get it. <laughs> and you just realize they don't. It's like it's a sad situation, and it's like I don't. Me being the person I am, I just rather just step away because when you know better, you do better. It's like if I keep telling you, like we go to the gym, and I say, "Say, man, they got free coats." Every time you walk in the gym, they got free Coca Colas. You know, teach these if you want to drink sodas. It's two two twenty twenty. But it's like if you grabbing that soda every time we walk in the gym, and I'll be like, "Bro, you know." I don't rock with like that. You know, I don't rock with the sodas like that. And you you go back sneaking, getting sodas, and you playing like you're doing it with me, but then you still, like, I can't rock with that. It's no quorum, though. I'm not mad at you. It's just that I, I, I can't deal with, I don't even want to have that person that with that type of temptation around me. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because it's simple things like blocking your best. It's being like, like in, a, in a bad relationship almost. You know, a, a relationship is a relationship is a relationship. You receive with somebody or not. So it's just, <laughs> it's crazy, man. And you have to know these things. And if you don't know these things and practice these things in your life, you're going to get you off your focus. And like I said, there's a time that you can rekindle with certain things, but always keep your goals in mind. And that's, that's what I live by now, bro. So... I ain't gonna lie, being in those dark places, that's how I wrote the books. I wrote it, you know, like with the pandemic, I finished another book. It's called, um, I changed the title so many times, but guess what I'm going with now? It's called My Best Friend, My Love, My Reflection. And it's, uh, okay, it's just a, bu- a book about like, as in, ain't no more self-help. Like my, like my kids, ain't no self-help, dude. Ain't no more self-help. <laughs> it's like you have to, all the information is out there. The 10,000 books come out every single day. Mm-hmm. People don't know that. So it's just like, now you have to honestly start using application process, application and realizing that you can't blame nothing on nobody no more. It's all on you. So, you know, this book is kind of like how, um, 
it de describes how we talk about a relationship is a ship. You're on the ship. Bound by y'all, it's you and that person. Everybody waving y'all off. But guess what? You got storms, high seas, heat, winter, you know, pirates. <laughs> so many things can happen along the way. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's you on that ship with that person, you start to realize they didn't bring a they didn't bring a they didn't bring a knife. They didn't bring a they don't, certain skills they don't have. They don't know how to man the bow, you know, but you out there. And you have a choice to abandon ship at any time. So you can't really blame that person once you start to realize. And that's what the book is about. Like some people be right next to somebody that they love and hate at the same time. Or you next to somebody you love them so much, you love them so much and you done forgot about yourself and your personal goals. It's just a lot of things with that. So it's just like, I learned a lot from writing the All Men of uh, Dogs book. That, you know, it's just like you get attacked by people by just a title without because people a lot of people don't read anyway right. so it's just like yeah right so you have I to like learn a lot man yeah i remember when i did that i think we were, we were working a massage and i said Kev, check this out i did this video and i think it was something about uh it was like a you know i don't know they said clickbait whatever you want to call it i said something about uh i don't why i don't date black women anymore and you and when you you read them comments, you was like, "Damn!" <laughs> and I read yeah. every one of the, every, every one of the visceral comments I read, and I just you know I was just like, "All right, cool." But I said that every, every time somebody was, "I'm not clicking a video," and but you know, like, women just going off, just mad and upset, yeah. and just angry for no reason, you know. And they could be dating, you know, they could be dating interracially, but they still mad at me. <laughs> uh, That's mad right. At and I just be like, I said, but did you click the video though? You know, and when you click the no. video, yeah. And then I'm not clicking that video and blah blah blah. And as soon as they click the video, so much love, so much kindness, and they be like, oh, oh, okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot from that. I swear I did, man. Just the approach people have, you know. That's why I didn't put my picture. I put none of my pictures on the back of my books, never, because I remember people will go to a place and pick that book up and here go the cover and they'll turn right around over to see your picture. <laughs> even my classmates, it's like even the people I grew up with, like all men are dogs, what you doing? You know, it's like people right, look, right, right. that's that opposing force. And that's just enough if you weak to not write another book. Mm -hmm. You understand? To get you off your basis. Like, that's why I really like, I, my hat's off to you because you don't give up at all, I, just, I see you, you know, roll books, you know, I love this soul for um, this interview situation because I saw the last few interviews, fire, you know, it, this this is needed. But if somebody, if you would listen to those comments, I would be talking to you on the phone right now instead of on your platform. Right, and and, and that's the thing, you know, my, my thing is just to, you know, I want to continue, my, my thing is just about evolution, you know, I'm just going to, you know, even though I'm, you know, whatever the age I'm at, whatever, but I'm happy that things are happening now at, you know, at a later stage of my life that yeah. I, can, I can appreciate. I'm glad it didn't happen. You know, I'm glad I didn't get a book deal in my 20s. I would have blew through that money so fast and would have led the fast lifestyle. And who knows where the hell I'd be at right now. You know what I mean? But I'm glad that it's yeah. happening right now because... You know, I have I have more of a mental solid foundation around me, more of a, a solid spiritual foundation. You know, like I talk to my family and they see some of the things that I do. Some of them, you know, some of them not with it, you know, silently. They're probably saying stuff, but that's cool. But I have to continue my journey. You know what I mean? I can't, you know, I can't I can't stop and, and worry about them because if, if I stop and be like, Okay, well, I'm gonna just put all of this stuff aside. I'm gonna stop writing, and we're just gonna get me, you know, just like a, a regular little gig. But can y'all, you know, can y'all uh, fulfill, you know, help to fulfill my destiny financially and give me all of that stuff? And they'd be like, well, nah, nah. Well, well, what am I supposed to do if I stop doing all of this? They wouldn't have any questions, or they wouldn't have any answers for me. So, you know, the important thing, you know, is just the keep like I tell people, you know, you got to follow your own yellow brick road. You know, you got to ease yeah. on, on that road, you know, not all the time. Know. Most of the people that's going to um, go on um, support you. You're not going to know them. Complete like, I sold a lot of like the all men of dogs books. Like I, I, 
I don't want to lie. Like I sold a lot of books in India. Like I didn't know yeah, nobody in that. India. Like people hit me up, DM me, me with all kinds of messages in different languages. And I'm like, damn, you know, and I have friends on Facebook. They don't want to hear what you got to say just because it's you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want to hear that, man. They don't want to hear your mouth. So guess what? You find people that do. Like most of the people that's going to really adore and appreciate your, your, your creative side and your processes for anybody. Listen, you know, it's not going to be the people around you. They're not going to support. Get over it. Like they not. They are not. They're going to support. And you got, like I said, goes back to that humbleness. If a person even don't even like it, yo, post some if they gave you a thought or they might have not mentioned you to someone else when you're not around that support as well you understand so it's like sometimes it don't always manifest in something you could tangibly put your eyes and hear and stuff like that or they may not support at all but you can't look to them it's gonna always be a new crop of people that's gonna really because they're gonna be able to look at you from a from a not knowing you at all standpoint. Sometimes people look at me now, like I see people, like I'm back in Houston now, just for a second. But I see people <laughs> and I, you know, I roll up on them and it's like, they talking to me like the old me. I get it, you feel what I'm saying? But it's like, that's why we're like, if I see you out there, I'ma let, I know how you are, but I'ma let you talk so I can see, decipher like, man, this man that might have grown, we might can't, he, he not joking the same way, like, or he might be thinking of something else, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you have to always assess when you rekindle or when you need someone and keep and, and keep that empty cup perspective. And like I say, man, the people that you, is going to be your least expected, you'll, you know, you're not going to know where it's going to come from. And you just have to be open enough to accept that. And you're going to also, if you put your, your, uh, your faith, uh, your substance in hoping that some, you know, your your personal crowd of people that you know that are gonna put you, put you, put you up on this, it has never happened. You really set yourself up for failure mentally. So that's why it's so fun. Like I encourage anybody to do anything, you know, from YouTube and all this other stuff that, you know, just do it. Because at the end of the day, like your people that you, that's liking all your posts, when it comes to you starting a business and anything, you're going to see that dwindle. And that's just the way life is because sometimes people know you and they think they could mentally size you up and say, okay, well, damn, he could do it, I could do it. But until you start doing it. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and they, you know, and people don't want to accept it. Like I said, we're in the world where people just want to be right now. And I get it. So, but that don't let that get you from like trying things and keep on going. My daughter had a YouTube channel and she, like, this was years ago. And like now, everybody doing the same videos. I said, man, just imagine how many. But, you know, sometimes people say things and you read them comments and you be like, oh man, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing this mess no more. I'm out of here. And you know, it, that's all it takes is that opposing force to get you off your poles while yeah, the just, part is drawing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take that, that one. You know that one negative comment. You know I don't. I, you know, I'm I'm at the point where I'm just like you know I'm, you know people. You know people talking about investments, forex, blah blah blah. You know to me I've always me and my friends. You know what the the close friends that I have. We're like look, we're gonna invest in ourselves. You know that's that's the biggest investment we can do right now. And we're gonna pull. You know we're gonna pull the chain until we get to you know, where we want to get to. And, you know, everything you said was relevant. You know, it's been, it's been the strangers. It's been people, you know, from all over the world. A young lady told me on YouTube, she said, you know, I share your videos with my dad. I said, really? You know, and you don't know who you touching. You don't know who you affecting. People are out there waiting on you, your talents, your everything. Yeah. Somebody said like, you know, just touching on this real quick. Somebody said like the, the greatest, product that America has is us, you know, as like African Americans, you know, just going out there. Once you once you hit them, uh, once you hit that ocean and go in the deeper waters and you you are so loved away, away from here and so many other places, you know. So like you but like you said, you just have to uh put yourself in that mindset where, you know, if one negative comment is gonna stop you, then what's the point of doing it, you know, like what's the point of doing yeah. it in the first place? Yeah, for real. People, like I said, people have that uh, no weapon form against me, still prosper. But you right. ain't listening. 
that guess what? You're in a battle. When we hang this, when I press enter in on this Zoom, I'm going back to the battle. Like, you feel me? You're going back to the battle. You're going, you have to do what you have to do, to, you know, whatever the situation is. Same with mm -hmm. me. And, you know, like, I advise anybody, like, from, from this, this whole situation with COVID, you know, sharpen your spiritual discernment, like, you know, in relationships with people and everything you do. Like, sometimes, like, even in relationship, like, if you do a man meeting a woman and a woman meeting a man, what is this gonna cost me? Like, financially and <laughs> everything else that come with it. You know, you have to really ask questions now. And if you're not asking questions, you about to be with the wind, with the way, with the wind, you, you know, so this is that, this, that time. It's 2020 and all this happened for a reason, you know. 2020 is clear vision. So I think that, you know, people don't understand. Like they say, well, the new world order now, man, we living in it now. We here. <laughs> we here. Right. We here. We're in it right now. So it's just like, ain't no thinking about it. You have to adjust mentally. And I'm going to say this, and like, if you don't, you know, if you don't have an abundance mindset, if you don't change your perception, then you're going to perish with the old time. It's going to be like the old, old Testament. You're going to be in those history books. But right now we're living in the now. And you have to prepare yourself and be advanced of what was going on and stop looking behind. Right. It's like, you know, it said, you know, the, the Old Testament, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, just like, all right, get your family, be out. And I think it was like the lady turned around, she and somebody turned around, they turned into a pillow of salt, you know. So if you get a, if you get a, a, a solid divine message that just says, start this, do this, move this way, go that way, you know, that, that's the, that's your, that's your divine GPS that you're listening to. That's, that's yeah. what's going to stop you from not going to the beach with 50,000 people and getting sick and being on the ventilator, you know what I'm saying? And not going to, going, going back to work too fast, you know, like, Whoa, dude, don't go that way. I got this for you that way. You know what I'm saying? Remember that, sure. that position that you was crying and asking for? Cool. Look, go over there and apply and we're going to fast track you to this or that. But people so used to the, the, their comfort zone. You know, people are so used to their comfort zones. Like, okay, I'm gonna take away your mattress. You gotta sleep on the floor tonight. No AC. What, man? You crazy? I can't sleep in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. so it's like it's the, it was the only opportunity we had to dive into uh, the Most High God's creations to see how things work. Because you, everybody was home at one time. Every everything shut down. You, you know, it was it was time for you to really go outside and observe something things if it was that's the approach I took and I learned so much and it was like some people ready to go back some people not going back you know it's gonna have so many different it's gonna change everything we know and if the dependency should have a portion of your dependency on this stuff should have been minimized through this situation you should be able to learn how to do little things to kind of like okay if this should happen again excuse my life if this happened again I'll be at least know how to do this. But a lot of people sat, watched that news, waited every day to, for them to open it up. And now when you open it up, you ain't even really relaxing. You ain't learned nothing. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? You might have messed up this, but this was that time. If this was the real end of time, the real end of days, you know, you seen who was scared, who was really scared. Like, instead of just being fearful, if this, if you, like I said, we was waiting on a mass event to happen when they shut the country down, as the pandemic, people dying all over the place. When you take that time out to start sharpening up your people skills, your smiles, you know what I'm saying? Your, mm -hmm. your giving, you know, not, you know, in a joke sense of, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies. This is, should have been that time. Like, right. you know, this is, should have been a time to acknowledge, like go outside and acknowledge, you know, the, the the things that usually you don't acknowledge, the trees, the grass, looking around. But if you sat and watched that news, you know, you might not be plugged into this algorithm. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, people, <laughs> you know, yeah, people talk, <laughs> people talk about life, you know, like you said, the old me, you know, I still love to laugh and travel and, you know, I still love, so part of that is still in me, but you know, yeah. I've grown. I feel just like I see you. You know, you you've grown. You know, you still, in a sense, that Kevin. You know, you love to have. Oh yeah. You know, you love. Yeah. You know, who don't? 
you know, but there's still that part of you that's like, all right, cool. After this, I got to get back, you know, to doing what I got to do. You know, yeah. talk, you know, like y'all can stay down here in second line and eat crawfish all day. That's going to be here. But, you know, I got I got a destiny. I got to <laughs> take care of, yeah. you know. And yeah. You know, and if you do everything in moderation like that, when you come back, when I go home in second, I party hard. Because, yeah. Because, you know, I miss, I'm, it's an appreciation instead of just taking it for exactly. granted. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like people move away, come back, look at New Orleans people, like they talk, man, nah, man, that's always needed. You know, all that. So, you know, I just, you know, I'm, it's a humbling experience, this whole COVID and all this other stuff. It was just, it was needed, man. Like J Electronica say, the scriptures was needed. <laughs> <laughs> needed for real. Yeah, like I was, uh, I remember when I went to the, uh, when in the Bahamas, I, I was part of the Caribbean. Uh, yeah, it was, I think it was NASA. We was on a little bus, on a little van with some of the some Jamaican brothers and sisters. And uh, you know, I, I was telling them like New Orleans is like an island without like the crystal clear blue water and the beach. You know, that's yeah. great food, music, coach, all of that good stuff. But it's just just the fact that you know we just don't have the crystal clear blue water like y'all have. We don't have like that. You know, we still have that that go with the flow vibe, speak to everybody, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's why when I go to these beaches and stuff, it's so easy for me to talk to people, so easy for me to just relax and just kind of just feel like I'm at home, you know? For real. That's it. I think a lot of people will be uh, amazed. Like, seriously, there's a, there's a bunch of all moments and the, the, the noticeable similarities of the islands as opposed to New Orleans, as to anywhere else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, the, it's so similar to food, the red beans, you know? Your red beans might have a little mango or something in it or some kind of, uh, you know, fruit to kind of, but the same thing, red beans, rice, fish, chick, you know, seafood. I mean, even the temperament of the man there. You know, New Orleans, we strictly about respect, loyalty, you know, right. we'll practice it all the time, but it's a different type of man there. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of woman, but it's just like, you see that same, I mean, almost spit image, just an island version and in different islands, you know, same thing. Same, that's why when people from New Orleans go to these places, if you get out and get on that ground, you fit right in. You feel right. right in. Like, it could be 10 years, it could be five years from now, and, you know, if I'm doing whatever I'm doing, and people, like, say, you know, you done made it big and whatever like that, let's say we both on Master P level. You know, we got, you know, hundreds of millions. I'm speaking into existence now. So we got, like, hundreds of millions in the bank. We done did all of the stuff. And you call me and be like, yeah, D, man, I see you doing blah, 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 blah. Man, you think you could? Oh, yeah, man, no problem. Hey, look, uh, call this number, talk to this person, tell them what you need. It's done. And if I know that you're a person, that you're that you're a credible person, that I know that you know you're not gonna mess the opportunity up. You know what I mean? So right. it's, it's no problem. It's no problem doing that. But I think sometimes people uh, have an issue, especially you know us as, as as black folks. You know, we have an issue of you know like uh, pulling each other up. Because I, I think uh, with that, I think sometimes people just not like you said the mindset, the mentality, that killer instinct because of, you know, uh, blaming the man. And I think somebody said it, uh, I forgot who said it, but, uh, you know, it, it's not, it, like Professor Cobble from the, the Hidden Color series, he said, you know, I could tell white people now, you know, it's not up to you now. I have to hold my own destiny. You know, I can't be mad. You know, I could look back at history and what I feel, whatever I feel, but it's, it's me, you know, I have to hold my destiny and I have to hold myself accountable now for where I have to go. I can't just sit down and worry about, oh, well, the man didn't give me this, and the man didn't give me that, you know? So it's like, I have to, like, you know, I have to build and construct exactly what I want, you know, what, what I want my life to be and where I'm supposed to be going. And I gotta go, cause I got things to do. That's right. That's, that's, that's facts, brother. That's facts. That's why it's always good to have a network of good people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, so you could spread the love, basically. Like, you know, like now, you know, I'd have been a couple of places abroad where I have a good network of people where I could call them and hook somebody else up with just safety and just a word. Like, hey, man, don't go over there now. Or, you know, it's cool to stay here. Just that alone, you know what I'm saying? Right. Is, 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 is these are priceless things. It's like, 
Like that's that stuff that don't require money. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But it require you having. It's like <laughs> I got this little phrase, this thing I said, like you know, it's kind of like people. That's, you could have the word of God, but do you have that spirit? And like sometimes you can yes. know all the knowledge you want. You can right. sit, in, but if you don't have that thing that's inside of you, you know what I'm saying? That spirit. Even when you go places, you won't even be able to put your fellow friend or in a good networking situation. Like right now, I call people right now in Puerto Rico, whoever, in certain situations and be like, hey man, my people coming here, even for a ride from the airport to your spot, you know, if that come from having that spirit, and those kid spirits recognize each other. I don't care what nationality, what color, you know, you mm -hmm. it's a recognized thing. Is you that that is universal. This right. ain't this ain't universal. But see that yeah. stuff that's inside that we don't see, that's mm -hmm. universal. And that's why it's like when I go places, it's like I'll be in a situation of like a kid almost. Not a not naive, but like as in a kid willing to accept whatever they say, like when it comes to like, you know, a help mentorship. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and man, it's so it's so crucial, man, to be able to ex accept things, even knowledge, bro. Because like right now, you know, I'm in a position to help, you know, people without money when they go different places or just, you know, like I say, safety. It just it just means so much, man. For real. True. They always say knowledge. You know, uh, what did MC Lay say? Uh, the strong survive and the wise will excel, huh? So, you know, we, you know, we, we at that point where, you know, like you said, it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's really like a, a point, you know, not to freak people out, but, you know, just we're really at that point of no return where I, you know, be telling people, you know, they call me, you know, call me whatever you want, but, uh, you know, we're just at that point where, you know, it's like you make a decision, you can go back to the way it was, or you can buy into the new you. So all of your dreams, yeah. your goals and whatever, whatever that your goal, that's that way. Now you can go back to uh, to the sinking ship. That's that way. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you, if, it's if always done. If yeah, if everybody else running that way, I'm going. To... <laughs> like that's, bro. that's facts. So you know, it's like you get to the point where you just you you know you you get you keep rolling and you but you can't play side private or save a private rhyme. You can't keep going back to you got to keep rolling. You know, yeah. you gotta holler that's back the word. If, you know or. Get yourself and get it so you can go back and be in a position to really help. You know, then you're doing so. But that inquire that also uh, includes you like learning what you need to learn ahead of you. So when you do turn around and hope that everybody's that stayed you know whole. So now I'm in a position to reach back and do certain things. It, it, it flow well. It's a good flow instead of you trying to get everybody else together without having yourself together first. Right. It, it'll never work. So Right. Yeah, that, that that carrying dead weight mentality, man. You know, it's like you try to sometimes you have a hard time getting yourself up out of bed in the morning. You know yes. I mean? instead of trying to, you know, you gotta try to save a whole yacht full of people <laughs> and get them up and all that stuff. So I was like, man, I right, look, man. if y'all still here, I'll come back for y'all on a point of time. Yeah. But for now, you know, hey, I got things to do. Ain't nothing, you know, like I said, ain't nothing personal, it's just business. No, man, it's not. And like I say, it's kind of like being 1,000 in a relationship. People not, might not respect the way you did it. But if you did everything, if you meant them well and you, You didn't want to uh, involve them in a certain situation or something. It may take time for people to realize that I understand why you did the way you did. You know, either you, either it was you, me, or the whole situation. It, you know, it wasn't meant to be, or it wasn't meant to care for it, or it was meant to catch me back when you got straight and I got straight. Sometimes you have to embark, people have to embark on their own personal journeys to me back in the middle. And sometimes that take time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it take time. And since we have this, construct of time you know it's just that it, it messes everything up because you thinking that it's supposed to happen within a calendar day month year and that's sometimes that spiritual uh delayed gratification take take something that we can't measure we don't know you know you can't put you can't quantify it on a, on a calendar and be like man i should be here in my life at this point 
Right. You know, they got biblical stories and got stories all over that from 50 Laws of Power to the Bible talking about how people, I think Peter had to wait 45 years for a land. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. somebody during the process that he was promised his land, somebody built something on the king built a palace on the land. But not knowing when the king built the palace, everything fell, it was his land. You feel me? Right. P process, process. You don't understand it. The man was promised the land. 45 years, people built on the land. Palace was being built for him. He didn't even know it. But if he would have got off the poles, negatively turned his back on it, the artist would have never gave him the picture at the end of the day when he finished drawing it up. Mm hmm Real. Uh, the, like, I forgot the dude name in the Bible. Uh, I think his wife's name was Sarah, I believe. And they couldn't have a, she couldn't, they couldn't have a kid or something like that. And so she said, hey, will not you go sleep with the servant girl and have a kid? So they had a kid with her. So the other chick, she got mad and jealous, you know? And so, you know, eventually he had to send them away, you know, cause I guess God told him to. And then, you know, eventually, you know, I guess Sarah got pregnant and she had, so it's, you know, like you said, it's a, it's a process, you know? Yeah, man. It's a process and what are you willing to give up and what are you willing to, to do, you know, you're willing to give up that old lifestyle and get, get rid of some people to go to your promised land, or yeah, you want. And sometimes people think like, "Oh, I'm getting rid of that person." Sometimes it's not really getting rid of them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta let the person get a full dose of their own life, and you know, it, it, it could be for you or it could be for them. Like, especially if you know better, it's like, okay, well, man, I'm a really, I can't explain it to you, but you will understand because you just you'll be in your feelings about it. So I'll let you. Go do you, figure it out, and you'll be surprised how at the end of the day, you know, you'll have that mutual respect, respect and it'd be like, you know, maybe I was wrong, but I didn't ruin the situation and like try to make closure on somebody that you, you set aside for a minute because sometimes it don't always be closure. You, 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 you back door and you come back. Sometimes you don't, I mean, you have to accept that as well. And that's the whole beauty of it all. You have to be able to, go into the black. Everything is created in the dark, right? You know what I'm saying? Everything is created with the, the unseen eye. So it's like, and people scared to go there and be risked, to risk it all, including your life, to, to find out at the other end, it, it wasn't even gonna be there. That's just, if you wasn't scared to dive in, you know, you never would have known if you, once you delve in and come back out, Right. You're coming back out to a whole new, better situation. But that fear, again, is always set in the back of people's mind when it comes to, like, relationships, death, you know, just bad situations. Like, why me? It ain't no why me. It's, you know, it is what it is, period. And, you know, it's all relative to your perspective. And that, that's what I'm loving, man. Like, for real, bro, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk. Yeah, and that's why you know that's why I created this platform. I just I just felt like you know there was something needed because people needed a voice. Because like I, yeah, we've both been on the other side of that camera. You know, we've been interviewed so many times and whatever, whatever, whatever. But you know, I I, I figured even even watching like when I the first interview, I, like I said, I had was a uh, it wasn't with with it was with our friend. I forgot the little the little uh, I forgot the little chick name, but she used to hang with Dawn. I think she she was her. Uh, uh, or intern or something like that. And I think you interviewed with her in the very beginning, but I oh, like Chloe, that. Chloe, yeah, Alexander. Chloe, yeah. So I used to watch. You know, as I did her thing, and then I went with Dawn, and you know, I've been interviewed with Dawn. Yeah, that's one person I got to give a lot of love to in the city, man, because she really, you know, helped a lot. You know, just as far as me, uh, just she just been there, like, uh, like, and yeah. as far as my growth and all of that good stuff. Well, a lot of people, yeah, she helped a lot of people manifest. They yeah. dreams, like keep going. Right. Like yeah. how many people, how many people, if they wouldn't have never met Don, would have never wrote another book or never, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like those people figure, be just so, figure out like the you know, spirit just, inside of her. Right. Just figure out how to reach out to different people and you know, different platforms and network with people, uh, you know, in uh, you know, in media and all of that stuff, you know, how to send out an email telling people who you are and, and just getting booked like that, you know? So I, so I, yeah, I love picking up on that game and people who just have that, uh, you know, people who just have that foresight and that, you know, that knowledge and that skill that I don't have. So I tell people I'm still a student, you know, even though yeah. I'm 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a perpetual all student. student. You're, you're yeah, smart. Yeah, like, I'm for all real. student. But yeah, so as we come to a close, ladies and gentlemen, with the uh, amazing Mr. Kevin Elliott, uh, is there anything like any parting words that you'd like to uh, leave, you know, for the people out there? Just like, just some words of inspiration. Mm, I think that just dive into yourself at this point in life. I mean, not forgetting the world, of course, but it's like sharpening yourself up. I try every day. Like I'm just like, like I said, I'm not privy to anything. I'm not privy to any information. I ain't smarter than you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just keep going. And so it's just like a lot of people, and I, I'm like talking to you and everybody else. I'm talking to myself. The consistency is hard. It's hard to stay focused. Yes. It's hard. So I just encourage everyone to stay focused. And uh, you know, and be aware of that opposing energy. Like I say, whatever you want to uh, identify it as, be aware. Like there is a metaphysical side of life that you must be aware of. That's more into play than the physical. Like every book that you have ever read, from the Bible to anything, all even every movie you ever watch always have a spiritual slash metaphysical uh, attribute that that transforms into physical things. So in your life, be aware of that, that aspect of life and then you'll start to realize that if you understand that, then things in your life will really start to really, uh, you'll start to have fun with it because you'll pick up the breadcrumbs from the metaphysical side all day long, all day long, you know, so that's it. Just remember that and, you know, have fun with it, man. It's life. You're supposed to be all serious all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be able to have that balance. It's a time for, to, for everything. So once again, I appreciate you for allowing me to talk, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Hopefully, you know, after the next book, invite me. When I put the book out, uh, invite me back so I can talk about the book for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was definitely, yeah. And I just, like I said, I just want this just to continue to, you know, to grow and manifest into wherever it's going to be, you know, but I know it's going to be something special. And like you said, like even with your daughter, when she was doing her video, she stopped. But, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to just continue to keep the train going, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's important. But yeah, thank you for coming on, though, man. Because like I said, it's been, uh, it's been a minute since we talked. Yeah. Like we're just really like seeing seeing each other like face probably been I don't know like 2014 something like that I think yeah yeah if they have a football season this year we definitely hook up and and do the football thing since you yeah. know I'm here now <laughs> <laughs> but all right ladies my pleasure friends. brother all right as we come to a close I just want to thank my my very very special guest uh. The Renaissance man himself, the world traveler, uh, Mr. Kevin Elliott. And as always, folks, this is your boy, Demond Alvarez, a.k.a. Mr. Soul of the Man. And as always, folks, we out this piece. Peace.